The Sharp Edge on realagriculture.com is brought to you by Mazic Seeds. Hi, I'm Bernard Tobin. Welcome to The Sharp Edge. I'm down in Drumbo, Ontario today, joined again as usual by Greg Stewart, Mazic's agronomist. Sir, how's it going? Burn, good to be with you today. We are back at Tony Balkwell's farm down here in Drumbo. We were here two years ago, first episode of The Sharp Edge, and we looked at his strip-till system. Now, we're back here because he's up to something new. What's happening? Yeah, so Tony's making the strip-till system work, but what is of most interest today to us is integrating the cereal rye ahead of the cover crop. And Tony's got a nice approach to making cereal rye fit ahead of his corn production system. Here's a look at what Tony Balkwell's up to. Hey, Tony, thanks for being with us today. I want to talk to you a little bit about cover crops. There seems more interest in integrating cover crops, uh, cereal rye into corn systems than there is even in straight reduced tillage, right? And, uh, and, and when you're traveling around and you're looking at guys trying to integrate cereal rye into corn, what are you seeing as some of the challenges? So some of the biggest challenges with cereal rye uh, into corn, especially, you know, in the fall is just that uniform establishment of the rye. Uh, what, what system's doing that? Is it broadcast? Is it then tilled? Um, you know, that just turns into challenges in the spring. You know, what's the termination plan? What's the nitrogen plan? What's the tillage plan? Uh, what's the sweet spot of termination before right. planting? And You've got a system here that's trying to deal with some of those challenges. Walk through uh, what that looks like in your, in your system. So we do fall rye with our potash. So as we do our variable rate potash in the fall, we also carry with it the rye. And we double band the rye where on a 30 inch center system like this, the rye is nowhere near where the corn grow is going to go that spring. Right, now when you say rye and potash together, are you saying that the potash and the rye are actually mixed in the tank? Or is it a two tank system that's blowing the rye separately from the potash? Ours is separate at this point. It, 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 we have no problem mixing them together. We right. run a potash prescription out of one tank and then we'll run a, a rye out of the other. Okay. Um, but as far as if you had a more simple system like that, you can mix them together and-, and even Drive on. Drive on. Cool. Yeah. But the key to our rye establishment is it A needs to be in the ground with some type of tillage. Yeah. Uh, if we have that, we can reduce the rate, right. which is key. And um, even uniform emergence and, and stand. We are planting it, so we want a good job across the farm. So, sort of a twin row rye in the fall. Now, what does that look like for you trying to manage it in the spring? Yeah, so in the spring, we don't really uh, have to do much with it. It does kind of, like I said, set the farm up on 30 inch centers, which because we spring strip, with our, till, our strip bar, this is the same bar that we strip till with, the same bar that we also do the fall rye and potash with. Right. We're able just to shift off on the 30 inches and, and strip as per normal in the spring. Most of the rye is alive and growing when we're doing our spring strip. So we do our strip till in the middle, no, nowhere near the rye whatsoever. So we have that you know, non-disturbed till bed with no, no rye, no allopathic effects or anything like that that we'll plant into. So. You have the twin row rye well removed from where the spring strip goes and, yep. and well removed from where the corn row is going to go. Uh, what's your kill date on the rye or do you not even worry about the kill date? No, kill date is, is super important still with us. Um, a, from a management point of view, a herbicide point of view, there's, there's a lot of factors for that. But just from experience, we want to kill it, you know, two weeks before planting. Um, we have and will continue to test how far we can let it go yeah. uh, for always those challenging years and, and challenging springs where we can't get out there and do good control of the rye, but we still want to plant. So we'll keep you informed on that. But yeah, I think timely, timely termination uh, so we don't get nitrogen tie up with the, with the rye into the corn um, is key. And um, yeah, we just, we just kind of are, are still fine in that sweet spot. But as a rule, we want to terminate a two weeks before planting. Okay, so you're still terminating two weeks before. But I think you sort of alluded to the fact that maybe this system would allow you some flexibility to let that rye in the twin rows continue to grow for a bit, maybe even right up until the corn's planted. Uh, I mean, Absolutely, like the, the goal is to cover all the acres with this. We do, we do about 500 acres of corn this way. Um, so by the time you, you know, terminate the first farm to the last, rye's at a very different height. 
Yeah. So if we do get into the challenges of we can't get that termination done, we do know, you know, that we have rye nowhere near the corn row. Right. So we, we, yeah, don't yeah. Want, we have no issues planting into it. We don't have root balls. We don't have uh, issues with the rye as it starts to degrade, causing emergence issues and things like that, or taking nutrients away from that corn crop. So talk to us a little bit about the benefits of the rye. I mean, obviously you've got about half as much rye coverage as someone who's broadcasting it. Talk to us a little bit about balancing the risks and the benefits of having the rye versus, well, noticeably having less rye than someone who's broadcasting it. Where, where does your head fit on that? So one of the key things is we only use about 30 pounds of rye because granted, we're yep. covering the whole farm. Yeah, fair enough. So the other thing that we like with it is because we're reducing the amount of rye, we're reducing, uh, you know, that cost, I guess you could say, but we're still seeing the benefits of that, you know, soil tilth and just holding our soils together. Our topography is somewhat hilly. We have a lot of floodplains and stuff. We need something to anchor uh, that soil through the year. And it does seem to be uh, a strip system is enough as, as uh, you know, has the ability to anchor that soil and build some soil structure, no different than a broadcast. Sure. So significant protection with some of the risks removed because you've moved it into a strip. Yeah. And then, so, Last question, I guess, what's gonna happen then in your rotation? Are you coming back then with beans yeah. that would land on where that rye was the previous year? Yeah, absolutely. So because we did the rye and potash strip here in the fall, and then we've planted corn in between, the next year's rotation beans will come in nowhere near the root ball of the corn and be planted on that uh, existing rye, of course you can't see it subsequent sure, years, yeah. but we do have that bank of potash there. So it's in soil solution, it's exchanged, it's ready to go. We do get a bit of that coming into the corn, yep. but we basically banked up that potash level for that, uh, you know, 30 inch bean or twin row bean that's going in between. In there. the next year. In the next year. So. Hey, Tony, always uh, good to be with you and see your wheels uh, turning. <laughs> Thanks for having me. Greg, when it comes to strip till, a lot of growers will want to know about fertility. What's he putting down in the fall? Right, so Tony's got the combination of potash going down in the fall. He's scripting it, that is precision scripts across his landscape, ranging from 200 pounds to 400 pounds of, of product and putting the rye right in there with it. So of course, some of us would think, well, geez, is that not gonna burn the rye? Rye's pretty capable of handling a fair bit of salt. And so he's getting away with rye landing right into those two strips in the fall. And that's sort of intriguing because we sometimes worry about fall strips getting loosened up and exposed to the, to the erosion potential. This is sort of protecting the strip, even though it's not gonna be the strip he plants into, it protects the strip with the rye growing right in that zone with the potash. Final question now, this isn't plant green. Uh, a lot of guys wanna do that. Um, where does this type of program come from? So you're right, Vern, it's not wading into two foot tall rye with the no-till planter out behind and thinking like, wow, look at the soil structure improvement thing. Get, you know, stability and erosion protection. But I think what Tony's looking for is give me a significant portion of that protection, of that cover, of that wind erosion, soil erosion protection, but I don't want to sacrifice, or Tony doesn't want to sacrifice corn yield because of some of the glitches and the hangups and the challenges of trying to push corn into rye. So he's he's looking for the benefits of cereal rye as a cover, but doing it in the strip till way that gives him, well, let's say almost no risk on the corn that year. Well, the best of both worlds, Greg, right? Right on. We will see you next time on The Sharp Edge.